Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching a video about monitoring Windows Server 2008. In this video, we're going to take a look at three monitoring tools which are built in to Windows Server 2008. The first of which is the Task Manager. Now, the Task Manager is something that you're probably already familiar with because it's been around through many generations of Windows operating systems. But it's been given a slight upgrade for Windows Server 2008. So we'll take a look at those new features in the Task Manager. Then we'll move on to the Event Viewer, which similar to the Task Manager, has been available in many versions of Windows. But the Event Viewer has been given a complete makeover. It is nothing like it was before. It is a whole new interface. And then the last tool is the Reliability and Performance Monitor. Now, the Reliability and Performance Monitor is presented as a single console, but it's actually made up of a bunch of smaller individual monitoring tools. The first of which is the Performance Monitor, which is kind of the age-old favorite out there. Uh, this is something that's been around pretty much as long as Microsoft server operating systems have been around. It does have some slight changes to it, and we'll take a look at those. But we'll see why it's not necessarily the, the greatest monitoring tool. There's also the reliability monitor, which is brand new to Windows Server 2008. And is something that I think is, is pretty cool. And then the last thing we're going to look at is something called data collector sets. And it's these data collector sets which are going to, I think, probably take the place of the age-old performance monitor. So that's what we're going to take a look at. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Let's go right into one of our Windows Server 2008 computers. For this lesson, we're going to go ahead and once again connect to New York Member 1. Now, the reason has nothing to do with it being a member server versus a domain controller versus where it is in our organization. Quite frankly, it's important to monitor all of your servers within the organization. The reason we're going to connect to New York Member 1 is because that is the server that we have been installing all the different roles on throughout the different videos, and so therefore, it is the most heavily tasked server in our organization right now. And if we're going to look at monitoring, well, we might as well have at least a little something to look at. All right, so let's go ahead and connect to New York Member 1 now. Okay, well, first thing that I said that we want to take a look at is the task manager. Now there are many different ways of accessing the task manager, uh, but the one I like to do is uh, just go ahead and right click down here on the task bar, and then you can select task manager from the menu. And this opens up the task manager. Now you'll see that some of it looks very similar to how we've seen it in the past. We have our Applications tab, and in here it will show us any application which is running. Now, there's no applications running right now, so why don't we go ahead and open something just so we can see it here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start, and I'll just go ahead and open up Notepad. And there you can see in the Task Manager that Notepad is now running. The other status it would be in if it was not running would be not responding. If it's not responding, what you typically would do is go ahead and highlight the application and then you could end the task from this window in the task manager. That would forcibly close that application and this is something you don't want to do just on a whim. This is something you want to make sure that, you, that you're certain that you want to cancel out of it because any data that you might have been working on would possibly be lost. Now the next tab in the task manager is the processes tab. This again is not new. This is something that has been around through the different generations of task manager, but there is one difference I want to show you. I would like to expand this out just a little bit because one field that is new is this description field. And this is something that I think comes in very handy. I cannot tell you how many times system administrators have looked in the processes tab to see all the specific individual executables and then they see one and say, well, you know, I just don't know what it is. And then you go out on the internet and you Google search it and then you hope you're looking at a reliable website that's explaining what it is. Well, now you can see what program 
pretty much in plain English, is operating that executable. So that is something that is, I think, pretty cool to the new task manager. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and end an application, but doing so through the Applications tab either was not working, and I will tell you, there, it's, it's rare, but occasionally it doesn't work, or maybe you want to just get right down to a specific process that's not necessarily tied to an application, you can go ahead and highlight a process, and I'm going to highlight Notepad, just because you can, you can see the Notepad window in the background here, and then click End Process. When you do this, it's going to go ahead and give you a quick little, are you sure you want to do this? Because you know it's pretty much saying, hey, look, you better know what you're doing because this can definitely have some serious consequences. And I'm going to say, yeah, I know what I'm doing, so end process. And you notice that instantly the notepad window goes away. All right, now the next tab on the list here is new to the task manager. It's not necessarily something that we couldn't see before but it's something that did not exist in the task manager, and that is the services tab. The services tab is what allows us to see all the different services and see what state that they're in. It also gives us the ability to click on the services button, and I'm gonna click on that now just to show you. And what that does, let me minimize this task manager, get it out of the way for a minute, is this takes you right into the services utility which we previously could only access through administrative tools. Okay, in the past, we used to have to click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then down here we would find Services. Well now, if we are trying to troubleshoot a problem that may be taking place, let me go ahead and close this, go back to the Task Manager, we may be in the Task Manager taking a quick look at things, and if we immediately see a service that has been stopped and we think it should be running or maybe we see a service that's running and we don't know what that service is we can just click the button here get right over to the services utility where we can manage these services now the next tab is the performance tab this is pretty much exactly the same as it has always been in the past it shows us your processor usage it shows us your memory usage and you know it's it's pretty simplistic it gives you a very quick overview of what's going on with your system but one really cool thing that they have added to the task manager, to this particular tab, is the resource monitor button right here. And if I click on that, it opens up another new neat little utility. Now let me again minimize the task manager so we can see the resource monitor. You'll see here that the resource monitor not only gives you a quick snapshot overview of the CPU, and then over here a quick snapshot view of what's going on with your memory, but you also get to see what's going on with your disk and network as well. It also gives it to you in a report type fashion down here. You'll see here that you can expand. So like for here for memory, I can expand this down and then I can look at details about what's using all the memory, which you'll notice by the way, we are at 90% of our physical memory being used. And I, I have to mention the reason why that is happening is one small change I did make to this machine is I reduced its memory down from the 768 that we originally had, which was already you know, probably just enough to do what we were trying to do with this machine. I reduced that down to only 512, which is really pushing the threshold of being enough memory for what we need to do. And, and you can see that happening right here. As you can see, there's not much else you can do in the resource monitor. There's no configuring you would do here. It's just a matter of seeing everything that's going on with all four of the main areas of performance on your system. All right, so let's close the resource monitor and go back to our task manager. The next tab is the networking tab. Now, the networking tab is not new at all to Windows Server 2008. We didn't have the networking tab there in the beginning, but it has been around for a couple different versions of Windows. Now the networking tab just gives you a very quick overview of what's going on with your network communication on the system and you'll notice that right now we basically have nothing going on. If I were to do something like open up Internet Explorer and then let me go ahead and minimize this, go ahead and attempt to hit a website. Okay, something as simple as this, if I go back to my task manager, 
is enough to show you that there's just a little bit, if you look down here, there's just a little bit of activity that is now taking place. And that's because opening up a website, well, we're starting to see a spike here. But even that spike didn't take us that far because opening up one website, you know, our, our network connection has the ability of handling quite a bit more than that. All right, let's go ahead and close Internet Explorer in the background here. And let's pop over to the last tab, which is the Users tab, which, quite frankly, just shows you what users are currently logged in right now. And you'll notice administrators logged in via RDP, Remote Desktop Session, which, of course, is how we connect it to this machine. So that is pretty much the task manager. Now let's take a look at the event viewer. So let's go ahead and close the task manager. To get to the event viewer, I'm going to click on Start, go to Administrative Tools, and then select Event Viewer. Now the event viewer is something that has been around for quite some time. But what we're seeing here is something that is totally different than anything we've seen before in any prior versions of Windows. If you've ever seen the event viewer before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you're probably looking at this screen saying, hmm, there's, there's a little familiarity, but yeah, this is very different. So the main thing is, is all about the view. Okay, The event viewer, as far as what it is, it's the same thing it's always been. It's been a place, it's been kind of a centralized repository for Windows to store all the various activities that are taking place within the system. And those activities are divided down into errors, warnings, information, audit successes, and failures. And you'll notice right here in the summary of administrative events, what I can do is expand on any of those. So I'm going to expand on the errors, and you will notice that they show you each event ID and then how many times they've occurred in the last hour or last 24 hours. So apparently these first event IDs that we have here, although they did happen at some point in time, they haven't happened recently. So let me go ahead and scroll down and see if we can find one that has happened recently. Um, here we go. We got a couple of wins errors it looks like have happened within the last 24 hours. So I'm going to double click on one of them. We'll t take the 4119 event ID. And then you'll see that what it's going to do now is give me a summary page of every time this 4119 error has occurred. So it, it's occurred a number of times within the last couple of days, really. It looks like once, maybe a couple of months ago. And this would give me an idea not only of the full detail of what's happening, but how often it's happening. And that can very often help you to troubleshoot if this is an isolated occurrence or is this happening regularly at certain intervals, things of that nature. Now, again here, you'll notice that this is a custom view that, that it is showing you. We have some other custom views that have been built into the system, like the overall administrative events. Over here, we can expand our server roles. And you know there's a number of different roles we have on this particular server. So if we want to see all the DNS server related events, you can see them here file server events, et cetera, et cetera. You also have the ability to go ahead and right click and create your own custom view. And creating a custom view is really nothing more than going ahead and creating a filter that you use regularly. Now we'll come back to this in just a second as far as filtering goes. But this is how you would essentially save a filter that you want to look at on a regular basis. That's what a, a custom view would be there for. But first, let's go ahead and let me go ahead and put that away and expand on Windows logs. The Windows logs that you'll see here, you see our typical logs we've always had in the past as far as our system log, our application log, and our security log. But we also have a setup log, which has to do with when you are actually essentially adding or removing roles to the system is really where entries would come into the setup log. And then we have the forwarded events log, which you'll notice has nothing in it because this has to do with any events that were forwarded from another system, which is something that we're not going to worry about for right now. Now what we also have is we can expand on applications and services logs. These are all the additional logs that would t vary depending on the 
specific applications and services that you have installed on your system. So since we have implemented DFS, we have DFS replication logs to take a look at. Since we're a DNS server, again, here's our DNS server logs, etc., etc., etc. So you'll see there's a number of logs that we can look at that we didn't have in the past. So pretty much, you know, the event viewer, it's the same thing that we've always had in the past, but now we take it a step further and really create unique views. Now, the one thing I said that I, I would show you again is, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight the system log here, is I want to show you one of the ways of quickly controlling what you're looking at is through the use of either filtering or finding. So what I can do is right click on system and I could go ahead and filter this current log. And you'll notice the window that opens up is the exact same window that we had when creating a custom view, except for in this case, we're just filtering this specific log. And as a for instance, if I want, I could say, you know what, only show me the critical errors for the system log. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that, hey, we have none. Isn't that great? So how about we go ahead and filter it down to warnings. And now you'll see that we do have a bunch of group policy warnings and print spooler warnings that we have working here. So that would be a way of doing a filter kind of as a one-time thing. And if I don't want that filter anymore, I just right click and say clear filter. And then it puts everything back. Now the difference between filter and find is find is not going to change the view that we're looking at here. What it's going to do is give us a typical find window. And this is something that is very different than the previous version of Event Viewer. Because in the past, people used to confuse filter and find because well, the window, the interface that would open up would be very similar. But the result was very different. The result of find back in previous versions is the same as it is right now, which is when you put some piece of text in here, like I'll put in uh, 7036. Why am I putting that in? Because I can already see that that's one of the event IDs that we have listed here. If I click Find Next, okay, it highlights the next one on the list. If I click Find Next, it's going to continue going down the list every time it found a 7036. So what they've done is they've made the interface much more intuitive. It's just a very typical find box where you're looking for some specific text. So that's filtering and finding. Now the other thing I want to show you is the properties of a given log. If I right click on the system log and go down to properties, you'll see here that this again is just a little bit different than what we've had in the past. Well, we have the location where we're storing the log. Typically, you would leave that alone unless you had a specific reason to create maybe an overly large log and you needed to put it out on a volume away from the system volume. But otherwise, you typically would leave it alone. Because what you're going to have here is a log size, a maximum log size that you're willing to set aside for this particular log. But then you also have the choice of what you want to do when you've reached that size. And the default here is to overwrite events as needed. So basically, if you get to that full 20 meg, then what's going to happen is the oldest event, which very well likely, I mean, it will vary from system to system, but this can be a matter of many months ago, that oldest event will be overwritten for the newest event. Now, if that's not acceptable to you, if you don't want to overwrite anything, then you can go ahead and say archive the log when it's full and do not overwrite events. And that is something that we really didn't have an automated function that way. Okay, What we used to have in the past was you could pick to overwrite only if it was older than a certain number of days and we don't have that anymore. Now it's either just overwrite or don't overwrite, archive it, basically save that particular log as a permanent structure, and then create a new log that's blank and you start all over again, or just don't overwrite events at all, clear logs manually. This selection has always been dangerous. And the reason why is because if you have that selected and the log gets full, it just stops logging which means you are no longer keeping track of what's going on in your system. So if you're going to select this item, 
you better make sure that you are on top of clearing these logs manually so that it never gets full. Now speaking of clearing the log, you can do so by clicking the clear log button, at which point it will ask you, do you want to save, meaning archive what we have and then clear, good idea, or just clear it. So those are the choices that you have. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. We don't need to clear our log right now. And that's what the properties of these event logs look like. And that is pretty much the event viewer in a nutshell. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the reliability and performance monitor tool. So let's close out of the event viewer and then go ahead and click again on start, administrative tools, and then here we have the reliability and performance monitor. Now this is a completely new, well, it's, it's a semi new interface to Windows. And the reason I say it's semi new is because there is one component here which is the same as what we've had in the past and that is the performance monitor utility. Now before we look at the performance monitor utility let me click back up here on reliability and performance because this is the same window that we saw before when we were looking at the resource monitor that we clicked on from our task manager. So that's the first thing I want to show you is you can see that here. But the next thing I want to show you is the performance monitor. This is something that has been around for quite some time. You'll see that by default here, it is looking at one counter called percent processor time for this machine. So it's showing me what's going on with the processor on this particular machine. If I did not want to see that particular counter, all I have to do, I'll tell you what, the easiest way I find is to go ahead and right click in the blank area and go to properties. Well, actually, if you want to clear everything, you could just right click and say clear. But let's go ahead and go to properties. And then here, you'll see here that we have the percent processor time. We're going to remove that. And now everything has been blanked out. What we could now do is go ahead and add our own counters to the list by clicking the plus sign here. That's something that's a little bit new. And you'll see here that we can first of all choose what computer we want to select a counter from. We have the local computer or we could go ahead and select another computer on the network. And I'll tell you what, the reason why you have this choice is because even monitoring resources uses up resources. So if you want to monitor a computer's true processor or memory type performance, you typically want to monitor it from a remote computer because the only resource you're really using then is the network resource. Now, likewise, if it's the network resource you want to be monitoring, well, you want to do it from the local computer. So anyway, so that's, we're just going to leave it on the local computer for right now. And next we have objects. And this right here is the list of objects. And you'll notice it's qu quite a lengthy list. And one of those objects on the list is, and uh, let me scroll on just a little bit more, is the processor. And if I were to expand the processor, you would see here that there are a number of individual counters. And a counter is an aspect of that object that you want to look at. So let me go ahead and I'm going to minimize that and let's scroll up here and let's look at memory because if you remember I told you before I did reduce the amount of memory so that hopefully we can see a little bit of activity going on here. So you'll see here there are a lot of different counters to, to choose from and that's kind of the point when it comes to why this utility is not a, a fan favorite necessarily because knowing which counter to look at in any given instance Boy, that could be a real challenge. And there is something that helps us with that challenge coming up here. We'll look at in just a few minutes. But for right now, I'm going to highlight all of these counters and click Add. And you'll notice here that it pretty much says, uh-oh, it looks like I must have also added the processor, both the memory and the processor. So let me go ahead and scroll up here. Let me actually highlight processor and remove that. There we go. This shows us that the memory object this asterisk right here says all the counters have been selected. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK so that you can see what happens here. You'll see that we have this huge list now. And this list, you know, we scroll down through this list. 
a lot of different colored lines, a lot of different dashes and dots and solid lines. And you'll see here that we got all kinds of stuff going on here. And most of it is pretty much just kind of flatlining out, some of it down near the bottom, some of it up near the top. It's pretty much because we're not doing a whole lot right now. I mean, if I were to go ahead and click on Start and maybe go to Administrative Tools and ask for a utility, additional utility to open up. Oh, you might have saw it in the background. Let me close the utility. You can see that we started tasking this system quite a bit, actually, considering we're pushing the threshold of memory. So as you can see, you can definitely get a view of what's going on with your system, but kind of difficult to really pinpoint exactly what it is you want to look at when using this tool. Now you can pick and choose which lines you want to see by either clearing or adding a certain checkbox back in or you even have the ability to go ahead and highlight one of them and then click on the actual highlighter which will turn that one particular line into a nice thick black line that would stand out from the rest also I wanted you to notice that when you put your cursor let me go ahead and clear that highlighter when you put your cursor just on one of these lines it will tell you exactly which counter that line represents. So this one says it's available bytes, whereas if I move my cursor down a little bit, this one is available M bytes. Whereas, let's go back to this one. This was bytes, this megabytes. If I come down here just to pick something, system driver, resident bytes, etc., etc. It can be quite confusing. So let's move away from the performance monitor and let's move on to the next item which is the reliability monitor. Now this is something I think is pretty cool. The reliability monitor is just that. It is something that tracks all the changes that are made to your system. Every time you add a role, remove a role, add some software, make a significant change, maybe install a service pack, and then it looks at the result of doing so and in some cases you just end up with a little information bar here so let me double click on that and it will show you what exactly took place it's just information and you'll notice that there were no failures it just says that something happened there was some software installed and then you also have some red X's here and if you click on the day with the red X you can actually go down here and you'll see that there was an application failure apparently on that day Explorer stopped responding back on September 19th, 2008. Every time there is a failure of some sort, the index will be reduced. And as you go through time without failures, the index will increase. And the index will be a maximum of 10 and a minimum of zero. So not only can you look day by day to see what these failures are, so maybe I can see back on September 10th, I can scroll down here and see that there was some updates and then there was a, a disruptive shutdown as part of doing those updates. So maybe I'm not worried about it because maybe that was a forced shutdown as part of the updates. But then like I said here, nine days later, Explorer stopped responding, hmm, may need to see if we have a trend. But outside of all of that, I have an overall index that says, okay, well, Right now, we're sitting at an 8.59. We're still sitting pretty high on our reliability, on our stability. You'll notice know, system stability chart. There is no magic number that says, okay, well, if you get below 8 or if you get below 5, or there's no one particular number that says your system is no longer stable. It's just something that you want to keep an eye on and you want to watch for a trend. You know, so as for instance here, you'll notice that we were running pretty stable for quite some time. And then we lost a little stability, leveled out, lost a little more, leveled out. And we actually have ever so slightly come back up. Because you'll notice at that last error we were at 8.48. But we are working our way back up again. As long as I don't continue to see this trend, we're probably okay. But if I continue to see it heading down, I'm going to have to take a good look at what's going on with this system and determine if I need to either take away some of the functionality of the system, maybe it can't handle everything, or if it needs some cleaning up. So that's the reliability monitor. There's really nothing to configure here. It's just a matter of seeing how the system is doing, and I think that's pretty cool. All right, speaking of something that's pretty cool, let me take you on over to 
something that I think is probably the best tool out of this entire reliability and performance council, and that is the data collector sets. Data collector sets, let me go ahead and expand this, are what I personally think are going to take the place of the performance monitor. Because what we have here is, first of all, some built-in system data collector sets. And there's actually four built-in collector sets that Windows has provided. There's system performance, system diagnostics, LAN diagnostics, and then also, if we were on a domain controller, you would see that there were some Active Directory diagnostics as well. Now, the way these work is I'm going to go ahead and take system performance, and it's kind of just a predefined template of some of the really common counters. Matter of fact, Microsoft had recently told me that I was I was at an event where they had told me that they had interviewed hundreds of thousands of administrators and kind of tallied what counters they were looking at. And so they put them right into this utility. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to ask it to go ahead and start the analysis of system performance. And you'll see here in just a moment that there you go, the, uh, the little green play arrow has come onto the screen telling us that it is currently running this performance check. Now when it runs this check, what it's going to do is it's going to create a report for me. So I'm going to go down here to system reports, expand system performance, and you'll see here that it's creating a report. When I click on that report, well, there's nothing to see yet because it tells me that it's currently running and it's going to collect data for 60 seconds. That is a predefined set amount of time that it's going to gather data to tell me what's going on with the system. System diagnostics would also run for 60 seconds. LAN diagnostics will run until you tell it to stop. It runs for an indefinite amount of time. And I will tell you that the Active Directory Diagnostics, which we don't see here because we're not on a domain controller, the Active Directory Diagnostics will actually run for 300 seconds or what is actually five minutes. So we should be pretty close to the 60 seconds. And matter of fact, as I say that, we are there because it is now generating the report. And you will see that it now opens up a report. And this is what I think is really awesome. This kind of gives you the best of both worlds. If you are confident enough within the knowledge of your system and all the various counters that are out there to know exactly you know every nook and cranny, every granular detail that you want to see, they give it to you here. If I scroll down, you will see here that I can expand upon the processor, the processes, scroll down here and it's giving me every last detail and, and services, and system, and everything that I've shown you so far, scrolling down through here, that's just for processor related stuff. I still have the network, and the disk, and the memory, plus overall report statistics. Okay, so there's just a lot of stuff to look at here. But if you don't want to be bothered with every little granular detail, let me go ahead and expand that back up again, you will see here that you get a very quick overview of what's taking place. And then more specifically right here, the overall diagnostic results is you'll notice that the processor, the network, and the disk, well, they were all okay. They were all sitting pretty much idle, but our memory was very busy. It was using up 83% of the available memory. Only 84 meg was left out of the 512. And up here, it tells you flat out, warning, you've got a problem here. The system is experiencing excessive paging. Why is it experiencing excessive paging? Because the available memory is very low. And guess what? They even give you, and this is my favorite part right here, the resolution. You need to upgrade the physical memory or reduce your system load. Plain and simple. I don't know what else to tell you other than that. That's super cool in my book. Okay, That is just as cool as cool can be. Now. If that's not cool enough, we can take this one step further, and that is besides the system-defined data collector sets, we can also create user-defined collector sets. And we do so by simply right-clicking New Data Collector Set. And now we can go ahead and create a data collector set. So we might say that this is a collector set for, um, let's say, New York member one 
performance. Okay, so that might be what we call it. And then we have a choice. I can either create it manually, which means it's gonna be pretty much as manual as what we used to do in performance monitor, or we can do it now from a template, which is of course what I would prefer to do, because the whole point of this is to not have to be stuck like we were back in the old performance monitor. So I'll go ahead and click on next. And there are a few different templates that I can choose from. So I could take that system performance template, which quite frankly is going to be exactly the same as what we had over here with our system based system performance collector set. And then go ahead and click on next. I can choose where I want to store this collector set. We'll just go ahead and leave the default. Click next. And now what do I want to do? I can either open the properties to make further modifications to this collector set. I could start the set right now, which means I'm actually starting and I'm actually running it. Or I could simply save and close. So I'm going to select save and close and click finish. And I now have a collector set, which at the moment mirrors the system based one. But I can now go into the properties and I can make some changes. I could go ahead and I could change at any time where it's stored or how the reports are going to be named. I can modify security on these reports. I can schedule them, which is really cool. Maybe I want to go ahead and run this report. I mean, basically, this collector set's going to run for, for 60 seconds. So I could go ahead and run it for, for that one minute, and I could say maybe once a day, go ahead and add that into our schedule. I could create a change to the stop condition. Maybe I don't want it to run for one minute. Maybe I will get a much better view if I ran it for five minutes. Or maybe I could go ahead and set some other criteria that says when this particular collector set will stop. And I could also give it a task. I could tell it to go ahead and run a specific scheduled task. I could give arguments to that. So there are so many things that I can do to this particular collector set to make it my own. All right, well, that is pretty much the reliability and performance monitor. And as you can see, it, we have the age old performance monitor. Look at that, still going. It's all kinds of crazy data going on here. We have a reliability monitor which shows us a quick snapshot overview of how reliable our system is and where events are taking place that affect that reliability. And then of course we have our data collector sets which will generate these reports which give us a nice summarized overview and even suggestions if we are having a problem. All right, well let's go see what we've talked about in this video. All right, well, after watching this video, you should now know how to monitor with the task manager and know what each tab can be used for. You should know how to monitor using the event viewer. And the main thing there is knowing how to navigate the new interface because it has changed considerably. And you should also be able to monitor with the reliability and performance monitor, including the performance monitor, which has been around for a long time and eh, is not the most user friendly tool the reliability monitor which is new to server 2008 and data collector sets to create reports now one thing I want to emphasize before we end this video is the importance of focusing on what tools are available where to access them and the basics on how to use them more so than focusing on every little detail of those tools and the reason why is because every scenario that you are presented with is going to be different from every other scenario and so it's it's not so much a matter of memorizing well if this were to happen then I would do this and if that were to happen I would do that it's a matter of saying alright we have a problem I know what my tools are I know how to use them I can solve this problem alright well that's all I got for you in this video I look forward to seeing you in the next one.